fifth estate. Tonight on the fifth estate. September 11th, 2001, the most scrutinized day in history. Two of the most recognizable buildings in the city of New York have been attacked. And then the entire top of the building just blew up. But eight years later, there may be more questions than ever. I do not believe that it was 19 guys with box cutters taking orders from Osama bin Laden in some cave in Afghanistan. An increasing number of people now believes the U.S. government was behind it. From the Twin Towers. Now, how many of you knew on 9-11 that these towers uh, were brought down by explosive controlled demolition? To the Pentagon. Nothing hit the building at the Pentagon. The damage was caused covertly from within with pre-planted explosives. To the doomed flight, United 93. Brave people trying to combat terrorists in cockpit. This is all the stuff, really, of, of, of a Hollywood blockbuster. This is really, really a problem for the official story. We've pulled the rug out from under the official story and by... Hello, I'm Bob McKillen. Welcome to the Fifth Estate. The skyline of New York City is very different today from September the 11th, 2001. And public opinion here is very different too. In the immediate aftermath of those terrible events on 9-11, the majority of Americans believed their government and the official story that 19 hijackers funded and trained by Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden were responsible. That was then. Incredibly, public opinion polls now show that the majority of Americans believe the Bush administration had advanced knowledge of those attacks and in one way or another allowed them to happen. And polls show that one Canadian in three believes that too. Tonight, call it conspiracy theory of the search for truth, we're going to ask why is this happening? What are the unanswered questions and unresolved issues that have allowed these alternative 9-11 theories to thrive? Because one thing is certain, the people who believe them aren't going away anytime soon. It is the 8th anniversary of September 11th, and at Ground Zero, New York firefighters gather to remember more than 300 colleagues who perished. Every year they come to ensure that what happened here won't be forgotten, the worst attack on American soil since Pearl Harbor. At that very moment, there's another gathering in Lower Manhattan to mark 9-11. Not to keep its history alive, but to demand the truth about what these people believe really happened that morning. The truth they maintain the U.S. government has kept hidden ever since. They call themselves the 9-11 Truth Movement. Truthers, some call them. Please give a warm, we are changed welcome to Mr. Richard Gates, AIA. Their guest of honor tonight is the man who's become one of the leaders of the movement, Richard Gage. What? Thank you. He doesn't look like an anti-establishment lightning rod. In fact, for 20 years, Gage was a mild-mannered architect in San Francisco who bought into the official story. Now, here I was looking at an explosion of the World Trade Center Twin Towers in the morning of 9-11, and the experts are telling me this is a gravitational collapse due to structural weakening by fire. What did I know? I had never seen a building come down like this before, these twin towers. Uh, it's a very explosive event, as it turns out. Uh, but in retrospect, I, I didn't know what a, a high-rise gravitational collapse looked like because there had never been one. Then, five years after 9-11, Gage heard something on the car radio that would change his life. This is Guns and Butter. It's not difficult to see that the official account of the World Trade Center cannot be true. 
It was David Ray Griffin who's been called the guru of the 9-11 truth movement. Steel frame high-rise buildings have never collapsed except when they have been brought down by explosives in the process known as controlled demolition. It was like I was hit by a two-by-four uh, three and a half years ago. I could not believe that here's this set of evidence which is so clear uh, to, to me and to so many people, but that the large majority, the vast majority of architects and engineers were completely unaware of it, not having seen it on mainstream media. It's as, it's as if there's a, a curtain drawn over the story of the evidence of 9-11 and the destruction of these three World Trade Center high-rise collapses. He quit being an architect and has become a full-time uh, proselytizer of the 9-11 truth movement. Jonathan Kay of the National Post is writing a book on 9-11 truth, including Richard Gage. He's proud of standing up for what he regards as the truth. Uh, and people call him a conspiracy theorist, but it, it doesn't matter to him. He, he really believes he's fighting for the truth. And if people in his industry mock him, it doesn't bother him. Please put your hands together and welcome San Francisco Bay Area architect, Richard Gage, AIA. Another day, another chance to spread the word, building the case that for reasons of physics and structural engineering, destruction of the Twin Towers must have been intentionally done, not with planes, but explosives. This particular project has proven to be one of the most difficult, and not difficult in terms of reaching conclusions, however, but difficult in terms of the implications of those conclusions. For Gage, Exhibit A is how those buildings fell. United Flight 175 crashed into the South Tower at the 78th story and above. It is 56 minutes later. Watch as the floors at the impact point begin to crumble and pitch forward. Then, with the rest of the building, they plummet more or less straight down at up to free fall speeds. In other words, with little resistance whatsoever from below. It all takes just nine seconds. The only way that a building can fall for 100 feet of its fall uh, at free fall acceleration in the first two and a quarter seconds uh, is to have those columns removed and all at once. There's nothing driving the rest of the building down after that, that upper section has destroyed itself. It's tearing itself apart at free fall acceleration. And the concrete and the gypsum board in this building, almost all of it, is being pulverized in mid-air to talcum powder almost. About half an hour after the South Tower fell, the North Tower suddenly collapsed as well, it too seemingly imploding onto its own footprint in about 11 seconds. Again, not much slower than freefall. Richard Gage insists there's only one plausible explanation for the speed, symmetry, and totality of the collapses. Explosives detonating floor by floor, horizontally expelling squibs of debris. It's the building tearing itself apart at free fall acceleration nearly, hurling 20 ton perimeter wall units to 600 feet away. The only way those can be uh, landed at 600 feet away is to be expelled with instant acceleration out of the side of the Twin Towers at 50 to 70 miles per hour. What force can create that? According to Richard Gage, there's no doubt what it all means. 9-11 did not happen the way we have been told it happened. After the break, 9-11 truthers set their sights beyond the World Trade Center. This drama in the skies has gone on for almost two hours, and there's no U.S. Air Force. I said, this is impossible. That is when the penny dropped for me. And others are taking aim at them. The entire CIA, U.S. military, the entire journalistic establishment, you know, hundreds of thousands of people would be keeping the secret today. How credible is that? 